How's it going guys? Welcome back to the next section where we're gonna start setting up some of this Joser stuff and actually have this authentication system working on our backend. So what I have open here is I guess the Joser documentation. So the way you can get there is by just writing uh, Django REST framework. Then in here, you can go into API guide authentication, you'll have this Joser package here, you can go ahead, click into that. And then there should be a link right here for the documentation. So just go ahead and click that and you'll end up in the same documentation that I have right here. Alright, so some things we're going to need to do is install Joser, which we did, we're gonna have to install, install Django REST framework simple JWT that we already did. We have to pass this stuff in our installed apps. We already did that in the last section. And we also need this URL pattern. So that we didn't do yet. So let's go ahead and grab that. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up auth system, urls.py. Let's remove this stuff. I'm gonna need um, include. I'm gonna need regular expression path. And then I don't need this admin, so I'm just gonna remove that. This is gonna be a path. It's just gonna be auth slash. That's gonna be joster.urls. And then I'm also gonna need joster.urls.jwt. And then this will also be auth here. So this is just so that we can also do our JSON web token paths, which we're gonna to have to do eventually in order to send a request to get our, our like access and refresh token and to do things like getting a new access token by um, passing in a refresh token and also verifying a token. So all of that is going to be handled with this. And then our other stuff is going to be handled in this. All right, so another thing we're going to need, also I can remove this admin import since we're not using that, of course. And then from Django.views.generic, I'm going to need template view. So this is going to be for our React side. And then I'm going to do URL patterns plus equals regular expression path, and then that's going to be regular expression, and that's going to be dot star. There we go. So that's going to just handle all the other routes. So I'm going to pass in template view dot as view template template name, and that's going to be index dot HTML. There we go, that should be good for our URLs and we shouldn't have to touch that from here on out. So I'm gonna go, uh, go and close that out and I'm gonna work on the settings a little bit here. So some things we're gonna have to do. So um, we're gonna have to set up our email. So I already went ahead and created an email, John Doe 1357933. So you're just gonna have to use whatever email you're gonna use for the backend for sending emails and then also, you're gonna have to set up an app password. So you're gonna go into the Google account for that email, go into security. You're gonna have to set up two-step verification. Once you do that, you're gonna have this app password section where you're gonna be able to set up an app password. So I already went ahead and did that. So, so my app password is stored in what I called website and I have that app password. And then here I just made some comments for myself so I can remember what the email is and what the app password is. And then I'm just gonna set that up here. So, so email backend. So I'm gonna have to do Django.core.mail.backends.smtp.email backend. So just like this, make sure you spell this the exact same as me. You're going to have email host. That'll be smtp.gmail.com since I'm using Gmail. You're going to have email port. This is 587. You're going to have email host user. And this is why I have this stuff here. Just paste that in there. Email host password. This is going to be your app password. So mine is this. And then email use 
TLS, that's going to be true. So now I can remove these comments. I'm going to have to also do my database setup here. So for the name, I made database auth system. That's when I did the Postgres setup in the last section. I called it auth system. That's the database. And then I'm not using SQLite 3. I'm using um, PostgreSQL. Okay, looks good. Oh, no, it doesn't. Actually, yeah. It is good. Okay. Just got to make sure that this name is right here or else this won't work. And then after the name, I'm going to have the user. This is Postgres. I'm going to have the password. So the password I have set up is password123. And the way you set up a password is once you open that Postgres that we did last time, you would just do backslash password, you'd press enter, and then you'd be able to set up a password. And then you would have the host. And then the host for us is local host. Alright, so that's our database and email set up here. And then we did our URL. So next thing we can mess with is the settings. So we're going to have static or actually one thing before I do this. I forgot to also do the templates here. We're going to have to do os.path.join base directory build. So we don't have this build folder yet. This will come in after once we do our front end and we actually do npm run build on our React front end. We'll get the build folder. We'll put it in our back end here. And then we're actually going to have this um, template here. Right now, if you were to run the back end, you would get some kind of like error showing that. It can't, it doesn't know what this is, but that'll only be temporary and it doesn't actually screw anything up in terms of your API request, so it's fine, but we might as well just have this here in the meantime. All right, so. Some things we are going to need, so static files, directories, this is gonna be a list, and then this is gonna collect, um, I guess like static files outside of like the root static like files. So os.path.join. So our, um, so we're going to do base directory here and then our build folder, that's going to have a static folder. And then we're going to want to collect those static files and then static root. This is going to be os.path.join base directory and then static. So this is where our static root folder is going to be located. And then this here is just the URL. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this Joser documentation a little bit. So we already did this stuff. And then here we have some settings. So if we go to settings, we'll have a list of all the different settings that we can kind of bring in. So you're going to need this Joser um, setting here. And then here you're going to pass in these different settings you want to use and their values. So this stuff can be a little confusing if you don't really like if you're doing this for the first time. So that's why I'm here to kind of help you out with this stuff. And then you also have this base endpoint section. So these are the actual um, endpoint requests that you can make. And then let's say if you wanted to do things like activate a user, then you would do something like send a request to this URL to our server. It would be a post request where you pass in two parameters. One is a UID, one is a token, and then that would let you activate an account. And then I guess along with these endpoints, you also have to have these settings. So if, let's say if you wanted to activate a user account, you would have to have this activation URL. And then this would be activate and then UID token. And then you would be able to navigate in your front end to this kind of route here. And then when you click on, let's say verify, you would do a post request passing in the UID and token. So that's kind of how like, that's like an example. And we're going to be setting up a lot of this stuff. So let's say even login field here. This is one we're also going to need because by default, we are using a u um, not a username, but an email to log in. So we're going to actually have to let Joser also know that. So let's kind of do some of these things here. So you're going to need Joser. 
it's an object and let's say login field we're using email so now Joser knows that we're using the email as our login field so that's how you do that so some other things we're gonna need so we are using so we have authentication backends here and then we would go to JSON web token authentication and then we would have to grab this here so this is how we're going to know that our default authentication system is JWT authentication and just remove this and there we go. Now, another thing we're going to need is this here. So you just grab this setting and go ahead and paste it in here. So now we have JSON web tokens set up as our default authentication scheme. So it's as easy as that. And then of course you would have to put in these URL patterns. We already did that. So, Pretty much JSON Web Tokens are taken care of. Now we can kind of deal with the rest of these settings. So other settings we're gonna need. So when we create a user, I want them to be uh, required to retype their password. So we have this user create password retype. So I'm just gonna literally copy this, go into my settings here, right below here. Oops, I should wrap this in quotes. So user create password retype, and I'm just going to set that to true. So now they're going to require an additional field when they're signing up for an account. So you're going to need name, email, password, and you're going to have to have a confirmed password field. And then basically here it says that this field is going to be called repassword. So you're going to see more of this in kind of the next section where I kind of do more of these like URL requests to, or I guess not URL, but API requests in Postman. And then you're going to see like me actually using a lot of these fields. So another thing I'm going to have is, uh, let's say username changed email confirmation. So um, basically if true change username endpoints will send confirmation email to users. So that's something I want. So let's go ahead, put this in here, set it to true. And that's that. Now I'm using that. Now I'm also going to want one for password. So password. So whenever the password is changed, I want to get a confirmation email. And then there's things like send confirmation email. I want that to be true. So when I create an account, I want a confirmation of that. So if we go to, where is it? Send confirmation email. If true register or activation endpoint will send confirmation email to users. So I do want that. All right, so what are some other things I'm gonna want? So um, let's say set username retype. That's something I'm gonna want. So if true, you need to pass re new username. Now I'm not going to be doing resetting of the username, but just to kind of like show you if you wanted to have this as functionality, you would just simply do this and set it to true. All right. So some other things we're going to need, um, set password retype. I'm going to want. So when you go ahead and set a new password, I'm going to want to have this additional field here to kind of confirm your resetted password. So that's going to be true. So password reset confirm URL is something I'm going to want. So where is that? So I don't want this one here. Oh my goodness. Am I blind? Let me do it this way. Password reset confirm URL. There it is. Okay. So I am blind. Okay. So this is one of the ones I'm going to want as well. So this will be a URL to your front end password reset page. It should contain UID token placeholders. It'll be something like this. So let's go ahead, grab this field here and I'm going to want it to be password and make sure you don't do a slash here or else it's not going to do the proper URL. So it's going to be password slash reset slash confirm slash the UID slash the token. 
And there we go, that's how I do that. So now I'm gonna have username. And then this is going to be email because that's what I'm using as my username and then reset confirm UID token. So that's that. And make sure you have commas here or else we're gonna get errors. And then I'm gonna have, let's see, I did set username retype, set password retype, so that's good. I'm also gonna need um, activation URL. This is gonna be activate slash the UID slash the token. So that's our activation URL. So when we register an account, we're gonna get an email with our link, which we're gonna click on, and it's gonna be in this kind of format. All right, so we're gonna need send activation email. That's gonna be true, because of course we wanna receive an activation email. And then we're also gonna have um, serializers. This is just going to be an object and we're going to pass some serializers. Now this section is getting a little longer than I'd like. So I'm going to continue on with the rest of these kind of configurations in the next section and just put a little stop here. So we're going to go ahead and do this serializer stuff and then um, pretty much try to put this backend stuff to a close. Um, there's very little left to do in this backend. So basically the next section is mostly just going to be actually testing out these endpoints. So. Hope you enjoyed this section. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're interested in this kind of content and I'll see you in the next section. Thank you.